It looks kind of gross, but it tastes great to me. What? Today, we're gonna do a little bit of a what I ate today, which I haven't done in a while, and a, a chat, a little chit chat. I think we're gonna talk about mental hunger. I'm working from home today. I made lunch. I made a sandwich with veginase, veganase, don't know how to say it, and tomatoes on whole wheat bread. Tofurky, follow your heart American cheese with the side of the Earth Balance Smart Food. That's what I call it, Earth Balance Smart Food because it's just like Smart Food but vegan and it's, it's like crack. If I don't put it out on a plate or in a bowl, I will eat the entire bag. I don't know, I'm not like hungry but I'm craving something sweet and I don't really have anything sweet that I like in this house right now so I think I'm, Sweet. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna go across the street to the corner store and grab a root beer. Okay, bye, see you later. Dads. Is dad the twist off, daddy? No, everything's a twist off for daddy. That's weird. I got a cupcake. Ooh, or okay. A chocolate one. Oh, baby one? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that concludes my day. Oh wait, you haven't seen my dinner yet. For dinner, I had a big ass sweet potato. Just like a sweet potato the size of my face. It was so extra. today so far it's only 6 30 so we'll see so now moving on to the real topic of the video the reason you're all still here mental hunger I have received a ton of questions um, about mental hunger for a long time that I haven't addressed directly and I've gotten enough of them that I was like you know what obviously a video needs to be made about this Look at where we are now. Ask and you shall receive, probably, most likely, if I'm in the mood, you know. So I kind of wrote out like my most commonly asked questions about mental hunger um, and then my answers. So first of all, for those of you who are like, huh? Mental hunger, what is it? It's when food thoughts consume your mind. You just can't seem to focus on anything else or shake thoughts of food or eating or food related activities. This may take form in just thinking about eating, planning your meals obsessively, manipulating the meals you're gonna make for yourself over and over again in your mind, thinking about the calories, thinking about the ingredients, dreaming about food, daydreaming about grocery shopping, any and all of the above and so many things in between. Anything that where your mind is so focused on some sort of aspect of food that you can't focus on something else, that is mental hunger. Okay, so most of you probably already knew that because you're probably experiencing it. It's pretty common in the beginning stages of recovery and even for a while after that. So when it comes to how do you stop it, first you have to understand why it's happening. Likely you are in the beginning stages of recovery and refeeding, or you're not. I had mental hunger throughout my entire recovery, but either way, you're probably not recovered and energy balanced yet. You haven't replenished the backlog of caloric deficit done to your body through restriction. Your body needs food and a lot of it to get your metabolism restored and your, you back to your energy balanced state. 
Until you are recovered, your body will continue to act as if it is coming back from a famine. So this mental hunger is, of course, your body's way of telling you that you need to eat food. The reason that it's coming to you mentally and that you may not always feel physical hunger pains is because when you're metabolically suppressed, your body doesn't want to waste its energy on sending you physical hunger cues. And instead, it consumes your mind. So back to the question of how to stop it. If you can't stop thinking about food and food related things, the best and only solution is to eat. Your body needs food. It wants food. Its focus is 100% on food, which is why you can't stop thinking about it. If food thoughts are taking up way too much space in my brain, they always, always, always go away once I eat enough and I'm able to focus on more important things. So that's what it is and how to stop it. And now the next question I always inevitably get, when does it stop? Well, it stops when your energy balanced and that can take a few years. Be patient, keep eating and keep recovering. Eventually, your body and mind will trust you to keep it satiated consistently and properly and it will stop flooding your brain with food thoughts and hunger cues. Once you are recovered, the mental hunger will subside. And for those of you who hear that answer from me and still don't believe me, <laughs> this is something that I get. No, you don't understand. I can't stop eating. The mental hunger, it never stops. Okay, if this is you, I don't blame you. I know what you're going through. I know where you're at in recovery and it definitely can feel like that. You are at a very scary, exciting, and important part of recovery. Most likely, if this is you, you're experiencing extreme hunger. Extreme hunger, which I've talked about before on this channel, I'll link that somewhere up there. Extreme hunger and mental hunger typically go hand in hand because when you're experiencing extreme hunger, your brain is like, food, 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 food. Oh yeah, I've been there. Extreme hunger is good. I mean, you have to get energy balance somehow. You might as well do it quickly and at the pace that your body requires. As I've said many times, at the beginning of my recovery in the first month of full mini mod, I experienced extreme hunger hard. For over a month, I ate between at least 5,000 to way over 10,000 calories a day. And my brain was just constantly like food, food, food. It felt like it was never stopping. I was unendingly hungry. And if I didn't feel hungry, I was unendingly thinking about food. But instead of being afraid or worried, I just ate because you just have to trust the process. Your body knows what it needs when you're recovering from an eating disorder. You just have to give it some faith. And it's really easy for me to say that now because I came out on the other end and I know it's going to all be okay. But believe me, at the time, I thought I was broken and I thought something was wrong with me. I thought that I was the fattest, most gluttonous person to ever have to go through recovery, that this was a singularly me experience and that it was just the craziest, worst thing that could ever happen. But we all know that's not true. I'm not a binge eater. I never was a binge eater. I was simply going through what my body needed me to do at the time. And I went through it so you know that you're not alone. Anytime those feelings came up, even after the initial spurt, I always honored them. If your body is giving you signals that it needs more food through physical or mental hunger cues, that means that it's working on repairing something really important. It isn't just revving up for no reason. You might as well give it what it's asking for. That's the only way you're gonna get better. Finally, the question that you all know I loathe most of all, but I must address because I get it all the time. Many of you ask me, but why is this happening to me? I'm already at a healthy weight. <clears throat> As most of you probably know, unless you're new here, hi, sorry, sometimes I come across like a bitch. I really, I apologize. You'll get to know me, it's great. I was very sick, but never technically underweight according to the BMI chart. Very close, but not underweight. And you know what? It doesn't matter. 
you really, I've made so many videos about why BMI is bullshit and that there's, you know, eating disorders have no size or shape. Everyone has their own healthy set point and if you're below yours, then you're underweight. Even if being below yours means that you're still a healthy weight according to the bullshit BMI chart. So if you're asking me, but why is this happening to me? I'm already a healthy weight. Because a healthy weight, according to some fucking bullshit BMI chart, does not actually mean that you are the weight that is right for your body. And I'm sorry, you're gonna continue to experience recovery-like and eating disorder-like symptoms until you just decide to honor your body's natural tendencies and cues. So, that's what I say to you. You may think you're at a healthy weight, but really take stock in if you're actually allowing your body to get up to its actual real set point and where it wants to be, or if you are forcing it to maintain a weight that is lower than it wants to be, that is technically healthy so doctors don't jump down your throat, but that you know isn't right for your body. Only you can decide if you're in quasi-recovery or if you've given into full recovery and only you can decide how to move forward. I hope you choose recovery. It was the best thing I ever did for myself. I think I'm gonna end there because that was all the questions I could think of that I get asked about mental hunger. Okay, I guess I'll pop back in if I eat something. Hi, it's um, it's 10.30. I've been at my aunt's house all night catching up and she gave me my birthday present from my grandma my birthday is coming up. My grandma got me tons of really cool stuff, but I wanted to show you guys. She made me these pajama pants and it's, um, it's puppies and kittens doing yoga and it's like the greatest pajama pants I've ever had. I just wanna say, I'm eating some dark chocolate. It's the last few pieces of dark chocolate from ah, the box that Alice sent me. The last of my Canadian chocolate. Mm, so good. Uh, excuse me. My name is Rachel. <laughs> this is Ladle by Ladle. And I make videos on eating disorder recovery, body positivity, self-love, intuitive eating, veganism. That's it. So subscribe and like this video. Come on, guys. You knew that. Bye. Bye.